Guys kayak fishing over here. Guys fishing off the rocks over there. Saw them fishing off the harbour. And they are all after one particular species. Sea bass. I'm about to join an elite group of fishermen, allowed to catch one of the most in-demand fish in the world, the sea bass. Mind you, I've never caught one, and we've only got half a ton of back orders to catch with a fishing rod. Wish me luck. Beneath the surface of our lakes, seas and locks, there's an underwater world that has sustained us for centuries. That is a lot of velvet crab. And for the people who live along the 19,000 miles of our iconic coastline, fish on. fishing is their life. We've got a hell of a system coming in. I'll be meeting these dedicated men and women whose oh, office yeah, 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 is yeah. the ocean. That's an extraordinary fish. It's like a dinosaur from the sea, isn't it? And there's a nice one there. Oh, no! I feel so <laughs> inadequate. <laughs> and following their catch from port to plate. Is there anything you haven't battered? But life at sea can be both incredible... Hello, my tea. Whoa, just when you thought it couldn't get any better. ..and perilous. <laughs> I'll be searching for old favourites. That's a beautiful cod. To some absolute sea monsters. I just thought it was fisherman's tail. No, that really is a giant. So join me as I tramp and camp along this wonderful land of ours. How is that for a fishing backdrop? And go fishing from coast to coast. It really is a magnificent place, the British Isles. Welcome to West Wales, a coastline steeped in magic and myth, where dragons once roamed and the local saints lived for centuries. I'm starting my Welsh adventure within the Pembrokeshire Coast National Park. Round these parts, they're very protective of their coastline. A set of much-needed rules govern what you can do down here and who can do it. And the most coveted catch here? It's a fish I've never caught before. The sensational sea bass. I'm meeting a man who let me into a very exclusive club. Bowen, lad. How are you? How are you, right? And help me catch a fish who's done a disappearing act on me more than once before. You know what they say, Bowen? Local knowledge is everything. I've been talking to the locals around here, and they say if you want to catch sea bass, Bowen's your man. So it's all on my shoulders, then? Yeah, no pressure, just saying. <laughs> Berwyn is part of a small guild of fishing knights who set out each day at high tide into these fiercely protected coastal waters. Let's go. Good man. Let's go. They're tasked with catching the jewel in the crown of the Pembrokeshire coast, the silvery sea bass. With plentiful bait, strong tides and steep underwater rock formations, it's the perfect hunting ground for this prized fish. But just when you think you understand this extraordinary world, Mother Nature can make you think again. It's a beautiful day today, but I know the weather can be hit and miss in this part of the world. And you've been out the last few days. What's it been like? What's the catch well, has been It's like? been hard work. We had a heavy storm on Thursday, which we didn't expect. Sunk a few boats in our local harbour. You're kidding. I know, for this time of year, it, it's just unknown, you know? Braving these unpredictable seas is all part of Berwyn's daily quest. My dad was a miner for 47 years, and he said, you know, the word work is something that's not meant to be enjoyed. That is why we call it work. Yeah. To find something you love doing, and you'll never have to work again. No. So I take it you love what you do. I love what we're doing. We do steady 14 hours out here every day. You know, I have done for the last four or five days now. The long hours at sea are necessary to keep his loyal customers of fishmongers and restaurants happy, or his small family business will hit the rocks. People in this area love their sea bass. They do, and I've got about half a tonne on back orders that I've got to catch. And I don't like to let people down, but, you know, this is rod and line, this is the way it goes, it's sustainable. 
good for the environment, good for everyone, I think. Fate must be on Berwyn's side if he's to clear the backlog of orders quickly. On good days, he can catch 150 kilos of bass. Right, let's get these jellies down. But on the bad, he can land only a third of that. If he's to break even today, I need to pull my weight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You in? Yep. Good man. He's a small one, I think. Oh, there we go. We're in. We're in. He's got one. Yes. That's a good fish, Robbo. Nice job. Well, that's a good start, Berwyn. <laughs> They're here. Good grief, did you have two on? Hey, two. What a great start. My very first sea bass. But I needn't get too excited. To maintain stocks, bass under 42 centimetres, like mine, must be put back. And he's under as well. Oh, but... what a shame. So that there is what all the fuss is about in these parts. That is a beautiful example of a sea bass. That's a lovely plate-sized fish, that is. That will go into any restaurant around Pembrokeshire. Should we get some more? So let's go and get some more. It's sea bass fantastic. Commercial fishing for sea bass is strictly controlled in Wales, and licences are rare and expensive. Bowen bought his 20 years ago for £4,000. It's now worth over 18 grand. And how many are you allowed to catch in a season? Five and a half tons. Five and a half tons? Yeah. And that's a sustainable number, yeah? Yep. This whole bay is mainly rod and line. It's a heritage that's been going for, for years and years and years here. And it's a tradition that's proven to deliver results. The rod and line has been in use since the days long before St David himself. Nice fish. Yeah, that's a keeper. Soon enough, the fish come flying in. Ooh, that's a beauty. But while I'm catching the tiddlers... Nah, he's way too small. The lads are hooking the big boys. Go over the line, he goes in the till. Need to up my game. My angling ego is on the deck at the minute. Are you going to keep up with us then, Robson? <laughs> in my game, in the TV game, less is more. You know? Quality, not quantity. That's quite right. And good things come to those who wait. While that's all well and good on a film set, it's doing me no favours today. Well, you got one. I know I got one, but he's not a keeper. I want a keeper. I need something to eat. I mean, if this was about putting food on the table, my family would starve to death, but... Well... It's a beauty, though. But put him back. Despite my dismal performance, Berwyn's caught enough to keep the wolf from the door. At least for today. But his customers demand the freshest of fish. So there's a race to get his catch from sea to plate in under 48 hours. You must be Kaylee. Hello, nice to meet you. You too, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. We bring you silver treasure from the Bristol Channel <laughs> that I caught. No, we caught. It was a team effort, you, wasn't it? Yeah, small contributions, all help. <laughs> yeah. Come in and have a look. Kaylee's been helping her dad since she was a teenager. Recently, she's taken a bigger role in the company, working out of what appears to be a small garden shed. She's harnessed the power of the internet. We put a post out on Facebook to see if people would be interested in buying sea bass locally. And before we knew it, we had about a ton of sea bass on order. I think the public are more aware now of where their products are coming from. They want to know from the sea where it was caught to the plate. But before fish can land on a plate, they've got to be weighed and packed. A little bit of a competition. Guess the weight of the fish. Not a problem. I'm pretty good at that. Are you? 1,500 grams. 1 1.85. After the trouncing I got on the boat, this is where I make my comeback. Oh, he's a big one. He's 1. 1.9. Oh. I was 900 grams out. <laughs> no, you weren't. No, 90 <laughs> grams. 90, 90 grams, grams, not 900. Sorry, that was 90. a good guess, yes, I know. Sorry. That's what yeah. I said. You did, that was a good guess. <laughs> Damn, one up, OK. Next do you want to one. do the same fish? So you're going to put the chance. <laughs> <laughs> I know when to admit defeat. OK, you wait, I'll pack. At 18 pounds a kilo, these premium fish come at a premium price. It is over 30 quid, 34 pounds 74. Wow! All right, packed to perfection. Where's this beauty off to? 
So we are going to deliver that now to a local restaurant. I'm going to follow it to that restaurant. I'm going to be hot on this fish's tail. <laughs> and she's... <laughs> Kaylee, they pay me for this. <laughs> I know, it's worrying. What are you on about? <laughs> Maybe where I'm off to next has a better appreciation for my top-notch jokes. <laughs> Having just caught my first sea bass, I'm now on my way to find out how best to cook one of these fantastic fish. Dougie's the man, isn't he? Here's something nice. Cheers, man. One of Berwyn's regular customers is the Grove Hotel, nestled in the stunning Preseli Hills. And head chef Dougie Balish has a rather enviable office. I have to say, Dougie, I've been into a lot of restaurants in Wales, but with a backdrop like this and food like this, this has to be one of the best I've ever visited. That's very kind of you to say. <laughs> oh, mate, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> How lucky are we? And when the weather is on our side, there's only one way Dougie likes to cook his sea bass. Barbecue style. We'll stuff this inside and we'll get going. Dougie's been a chef for over 17 years, having worked in London, the Channel Islands, and as far away as Australia. So you've travelled all over the planet. Why have you settled in Pembrokeshire? Ah, oh, what's not to love? I know, on a day like this. Bit of a stupid question, wasn't it? It's a chef's dream here. You've got everything. You've got the Welsh lamb. And we're surrounded by farmland, amazing producers. We've got the sea right beside us. Woodland for mushrooms. We have everything here, absolutely everything. So here we go. Got our lovely sea bass from Berwyn, stuffed with uh, garlic from the grounds, some Pembrokeshire asparagus. Hope you enjoy. Hope we've done them proud. Mate, this is fine dining al fresco style at its best. Do you know what? I'll start with what we caught. My nectar. It's absolute nectar. I was just saying, Wales, is it past? Lush, this area. Oh, yeah. uh, lush. It's like a ballet on the palate. Quality produce cooked to perfection. And from sea to plate in just a matter of hours. What a way to end a perfect day. Cracking days fishing with some gorgeous people and fine dining in the best setting you could imagine. I mean, it's a job. Somebody's got to do it. May as well be me. Come on, I'm cheap. Cheap and living the dream. <laughs> After some fantastic fishing and fine dining, I'm making my way east. I'm heading from Narbeth across to Carmarthen. The tradition I'm going to experience only happens at night, and I don't fancy pitching my tent in the dark. So while the sun's out, I'm setting up camp. Oh, this looks a lovely spot. Now, most of you know that putting up a tent can be a real faff. But you know, tent technology has become really advanced of late and I give you instant tent. Look, I didn't have to put a pole in the hole or instruct, instant tent. Instant tent. And hey, matches me top. I like it. While my tent might be 21st century tech. Where's the pegs? You got the pegs? You got, got the pegs. What I'm here to experience is far, far less modern. For over 2,000 years, fishermen on the River Towie have been catching migratory trout, or as they're known locally, suin. Legend has it King Arthur's trusty advisor Merlin was born in these parts. But on the Towie, there's a modern-day sorcerer that can conjure up the suin. There he is. Malcolm, how are you? Robson. Nice good to, to meet you. Good to see you, man. There I am, just walking through the town centre and you come across something like this. Malcolm's an eighth-generation coracle fisherman who knows all about these fantastic beasts and where to find them. 
Can anyone go coracle fishing, Mark? Um, not really these days, Robson. It was always traditionally handed down from father to son. And at one stage, you had over 200 coracle licenses on the Tawi, and that's dwindled down over the years, and now it's only eight. So There's only eight licenses? Only eight. Oh, my goodness. OK, so while we want to keep it going, we've got to be selective on, you know, you've got to have a history of, of being able to handle them and, uh, and, and know a little bit about it. And this is part of the reason that people love the, the, the provenance of a sea trout, and especially a coracle caught one, because you can't buy a coracle net, you can't buy a coracle. Everything we do is handmade. Where do you build your coracles? Well, the coracles are all built these days here. This is like the brain centre of coracle fishing on the Tawi. I love it. Can I have a wander indeed, around your indeed. brain centre? Indeed. Malcolm's workshop is a monument to the 350-year relationship his family has had with the river. My great-grandfather, and there's a photo here of me, is that you? That's, in the, that's, in the, that's me with him. Coracle. He was born in 1876, and I know that his father and grandfather and great grandfather did it. So. Wow. I hope he didn't send you out on the towie in that mind. No, no, no. Because you wouldn't last five minutes in that. Not long. That needs a bit more work. That's, long. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Is there a specific time you go for suing? When there are seven stars in the sky, and it's dark enough that the net is not visible to the sewing. It's not a particular constellation, just no, 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 no. seven, seven stars. So got, and, and tonight ten. it'll be half ten, quarter eleven, because it's a clear night. And that's called, I don't expect you to say it, Llivuchur. Llivuchur. There we are, you got it. I just hope he doesn't ask me to say that again. I lift it onto my shoulder. But there's a knack to this type of fishing. Human equivalent of some kind of bug. Kind of stag beetle. <laughs> It's just funny. <laughs> Getting in and out is the hardest. But once you're in, you skull. It's a drawing skull over the side. The coracle is, is you know, it's quite nimble. Look at the way he's manoeuvring that. Right? And this is the racing stroke, then. That's the racing stroke. Yeah. Mate, this, yeah. this should be entered into the, the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. Fishing for these rare beasts sure doesn't look easy. It's like a torpedo. Amazing. And that's how you do it. Simple. With the sun setting over the Tawi, two man teams of fishermen are joining Malcolm for tonight's ritual on the river. A tradition so sacred, even Channel 5 couldn't sort me out a fishing license. For Malcolm, it's a chance to pass on his knowledge and skills to the next generation of coracle fishermen like his cousin Keith. And while I won't be joining them on the water tonight, I'll be there in spirit. I just heard a vicious rumour that well, one of your nets is called Robson. It, it's, what is it, old, worn and tattered? It is, but, but it's a worker. And um, the boys, um, I, when they first started, I wasn't going to give them a good, pristine net. To... So you didn't think we were going to catch the first time out? I didn't. And uh, within about 20, 30 metres, bam. Ten pound fish in my coracle. Beautiful. Yeah. I just hope my namesake is a lucky charm. Come on, Keithy. So what's going to happen is those guys just do this 500 meter run, go with the flow, going along the water like that. There's a coracle. There's another coracle. There's the net sitting in the water, just going down. Fish comes up, hits the net, and you'll know they've caught one because they'll both close in on the fish and get it in. That's the theory, anyway. But even stealth tactics won't make catching this notoriously skittish fish easy. I'm going a little bit close, tiny bit closer. How many you got, Alex? How many? No, nothing. Show me them, man. Oh, I wish. So are you lads just going through again, yeah? Yeah, we'll, we go back. You obviously love coracle fish. I mean, there's a nightclub up the road, you know. You could be cutting some shapes yeah. on the dance floor, man. Have you seen me dance? I'm better sticking in the coracle. <laughs> <laughs> As the night draws on, have we got smiles on our faces? No, we not. What? The cold hands. I've got a sinking feeling that the lads won't be getting the haul they're hoping for. Any luck? No. Oh, you're joking. Oh, my God, I am flagging, man. I'm doing nothing. I'm just watching them, and I'm exhausted. They do this every night until sunrise. And then some of them have to go to work. They've got nine to five jobs. 
And then they do this in the evening. And they've got families as well. Good God. Oh, has he got one? Has he got one? Is that two coracles going together? I think that lad might have one. Now, you got a smile on your face? Yeah, yeah. Bar of silver? We've had one for four pound there. Top man. We'll have a look in the Can box. we have a look? Yeah. Pull it out if you want. He's a beauty. There you go. And there you have the Suin. Beautiful bar of silver. And am I right in thinking that you put the tag in because you can't sell an untagged fish? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's illegal to sell an untagged fish. Right. Yeah. Is that going to be sold locally? Yeah. And what would you get for that? Seven pound a pound, roughly. Seven pound a pound. Yeah, roughly. Maybe a wow. bit more. Wow. Mate, that's a good start. Yeah, You're yeah. You're putting the rest of them to shame. But with only one fish between the group, it's up to Malcolm and his trusty Ned Robson to bring up the tally. Are you getting on, Malcolm? Malcolm! Say something. Just say sea trout. It's almost one o'clock in the morning, and with more than seven stars visible in the clear night sky, Malcolm materialises out of the darkness. Malcolm, fishing a bit slow, is it? A bit slow. Wow. Don't tell me. Should have been here yesterday, still dreaming about tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, I know. What do you think it is? I can't tell you. There's so many things against us. The river should be full. Nah, mate. It's but... fishing, man. It's fishing. Yeah. One day they're on, one day they're not. You get yourself to bed. Have a rest. <laughs> Despite 350 years' worth of knowledge, sometimes the fish just don't fall under the spell. Even Merlin must have had an off day. Oh, well, that was an experience with the coracle fishermen. And they'll be out again tomorrow night and the night after that. Because they're passionate and they're determined. And they've got perseverance. I'll just have to be a little bit crazy if you ask me. Yeah. Night night. <laughs> 6 a.m. in Pembrokeshire. <laughs> Oh, me back, man, me back. Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a dawn chorus. Well, it's deafening. I like blue tits and larks and lovely tweet, tweet, tweet. There's just a crow. <laughs> and other creatures that I didn't think belonged to this country making the noise. But anyway, ah, gorgeous morning. And when you're in Wales, the traditional breakfast is cockles mixed with lava bread. Mmm. Smells like it looks, man. <laughs> anyway, okay, you've got to try these things. Add a few cockles. Uh, yeah, mix that in. So, your traditional Welsh breakfast. Cockles and lava bread. No, I'm having an egg. I'm going to have an egg. Sorry. Uh, no way. No, no, no. Shellfish and boiled seaweed is a tradition I won't be taking home with me. With bleary eyes and a stiff back, it's time to pack up and ship out. Today, I'm heading to St David's, the smallest city in the UK. Oh, me wheel archers! Oh, me wheel archers! Are... Situated on the most western point of Wales, this isolated and windswept part of the coast is said to be the birthplace of the country's patron saint himself, St. David. Who, rumour has it, lived to the ripe old age of 147. 147, wow. Huge populations of seabirds are sustained by the fish in these rich waters. So I'm off to meet the local competition. Starting in St. David's, I'm picking up a section of the spectacular Pembrokeshire Coastal Path. At 186 miles long, it stretches almost the entire coastline and has been voted one of the world's top 
long distance routes. We couldn't have picked a better day, could we? No, no, we've totally lucked out. Totally lucked out today. Originally from Somerset, my guide Sam fell in love with the area, making it his home almost 10 years ago. As well as cultivating one of the finest moustaches I've ever seen, he's also picked up the Welsh art of spinning a yarn. So we've got, just here then, oh. we've got the uh, statue of St Non. This here is St Non's Bay, and St Non is the mother of St David. Mm -hmm. And on the night that St David was born, there's a big thunderstorm, lightning, very extravagant, very exciting. Very dramatic. And uh, a spring pops up just up here. And now the spring runs down into the well, which supposedly heals infirmities. So you can have a little dip in there later. You'll feel right as rain. What, have a dip and a drink in there? Yeah, I know. There's right? a bit of irony at play here, isn't there? If I drank any of that or had a dip in it, I'd end up in A&E. There's a good I'm chance. Saying, yeah. There's a good chance. Besides, being out in these spectacular surroundings is all the healing I need. Really opens up, doesn't it? Oh, it is. Look and... at that view. As well as giving old folks like me guided walks along the path, Sam also leads kayaking and co-steering tours, giving more adventurous visitors the opportunity to discover remote sections of the St David's Peninsula. I was brought up on doing stuff like this, and just walking along this coastline just reminds me of walking along the Northumbrian coastline. I mean, the wildlife's quite similar. We've got black-backed gulls, you've got cormorants and shanks, you've got the petrels, the sheer yeah. waters. It's beautiful. The steep, craggy cliffs make the perfect breeding ground for the seabirds here. There's another full mark kind yeah. of cruising around there, Same super there. flat wings. But as ever, Mother Nature can work in wonderful and often very weird ways. And they're great. I mean, they're land defence. I don't know if you know. They tend to just vomit. And they've got this really sticky, oily bile. And that essentially sticks the feathers together of the attacking bird. And they're going down. That's great. Yeah, yeah but climbers quite often get it as well. Our armed forces should pick up on that. I think so, yeah. What a great yeah. mechanism and for And it defense. absolutely stinks. It's proper stinking. Like, you've been in your clothes. You're not going to wash it out. Sam, every day is a school day. <laughs> right, yeah. 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 <laughs> right, come on. You want it? You want it? You ready? You ready? <laughs> I'm not fighting a full mark. No, I'm not way. fighting a full mark. No I love way. it. Who's going to mess with someone throwing up on you? Yeah, I'm out of there. I am out of there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Regurgitating birds aside, it's not hard to see why Sam has made this stunning part of the world home. Here we are then. So I reckon this will do for a cup of tea, won't it? For you, what makes Pembrokeshire so special? What is it about this place? There's something different about North Pembrokeshire, and I hear it from a lot of people, you know, that come in from other places, and there's just this sense of community spirit. It's interesting, isn't it, because when, you know, in Northumberland, I don't think I'd ever move anywhere else in the world. It's such a beautiful place. It's not so much the scenery, which is spectacular, and yeah. the wildlife is wonderful, the fishing is off the scale. Yeah. But it's more to do, it's a feeling, isn't it? Yeah. It's a feeling. Yeah. It's something that tells your mind that this is where you want to be. Yeah. And I feel at ease here, yeah. I feel kind of inner peace. I could not agree more. Sam's passion for his adoptive home is genuinely heartwarming. He's certainly been caught under Pembrokeshire's mythical spell. The story has it that the patron saint of Wales, St David, lived to the ripe old age of 147. So some people say. It's the coastal air, man, it's good for you. It's true. I hope, I hope so, yeah. Got a few more years yet. I hope so. Even you. Wait, a bit of respect for your elders, OK? Oh, look, and we got a gannet flying by. Mm. Is there now? <laughs> Having enjoyed the sea from up on the cliffs, I'm keen to get back on the water. Hugging the coast, I'm driving south to the small village of Dale. Passing the myriad of beaches and coves, I'm reminded of long family holidays we used to spend here when I was a kid, and why my father in particular fell in love with this place. My dad was a hell of a swimmer. He would get out the car, take his clothes off, and put on his red trunks and he would just swim, and I mean for miles. He worked down the mine, and when he'd come here, you'd, you'd sense the freedom he felt. Uh, the kind of shackles were off, and he could do what he wanted. But he might not have been so keen to go swimming if he knew there were sharks in the bloody water. 
about 40 species of shark call the waters around the UK home, five of which can be found off the coast of West Wales. I'm off to find some of these fearsome creatures with the help of a couple of guides who know all about the locals. Morning, how are you? Robson. Very good, yeah, Robson, nice to meet you. Richard? Yeah, that's it. Nikki. Nikki, lovely to meet you. So, what's the plan today, Nikki? We're going to head out to the deeps, back two and a half hours, Got and you. then when we get there, we're going to put you in the sharks. Go for a little swim with an apex predator. Absolutely. That can take a chunk out of you like an ice cream scoop. I'm up for getting to know the local wildlife, but I don't really fancy being the bait. OK, I'll just get on to me agent there. <laughs> you love being smoking. <laughs> Is that you? Yeah. I thought it was me. No, it was Just me. Uh, my agent, yeah. Tell him I won't do it for less than 50 grand. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't the 11th hour pardon I was hoping for. Marine conservationists Richard and Nicky are taking me out to an area known as the Celtic Deep where the sea has a depth of over 100 metres, far deeper than other coastal waters. This mysterious region of ocean is home to many magnificent species of sea life, including poor beagle and blue sharks. So what's the do's and don'ts when you're in the water with them? So, do's and don'ts is we don't splash or make any sudden movement, There's certainly no touching the sharks or harassing them in no, any that's way. That's not going to happen. If a poor beagle comes towards me at any kind of speed, up and close personal, I will be out that water like a Polaris missile. <laughs> and Jesus won't be the only man to have walked on water. <laughs> but before I make a biblical transformation, we need to find the sharks first. Are you a lucky charm? No, I'm, I'm the human equivalent of a banana on a boat. I always jinx trip. You're laughing. I do, man. It happens so often. As we arrive over the Celtic deep, all we can do now is wait. And wait. And wait. Three hours later, whilst we've had glimpses of sea life, we've yet to spot a single shark. What's the biggest shark you've seen in these parts, Abby? The biggest one we've had is a thresher. You've had a thresher? That's about 350 pounds. Oh, my gosh. It's a big fish, Andy. It's a big fish. You might need a bigger boat. You never yes. know. You know, I've never heard that line before. You are. <laughs> it's iconic. <laughs> yeah. If they don't show up soon, I fear I really will be tossed overboard as bait. So, what's the SP? What did you see down there? They're a little bit shy today, I'm afraid. We've got shy sharks. I think they're embarrassed. <laughs> they want to come up and say hello to you, I'm afraid. Fish fear me. I told you I'd jinx your trip. Wow. I told you I am the human equivalent of a banana. Okay. These images shot by Nikki and Richard on a previous trip is as close as I'll be getting to any blue sharks today. Hey ho. But as we pass an island on the way back to shore, something magical happens that might just save the day. We've got to keep our distance and they come to us as soon as they feel comfortable. In the waters of Pembrokeshire, I'm with marine conservationists Richard and Nicky. We've discovered an island that more than makes up for the disappointment at not spotting any sharks. There's a seal just popped up in the harbour bit. So this is the spot where the seals hang out. I tell you what, if I was a seal, this is where I'd hang out. Around 5,000 Atlantic grey seals live off the coast of West Wales. Islands like this one are the perfect place to swim with these magnificent animals. What an absolutely beautiful spot. Is this a local haunt of yours? Do you dive here a lot with the seals? Uh, yeah, every now and again. This is kind of... The seals are less used to humans in this spot, so they are more shy, but it is still a really lovely, magical place. There's a little pinnacle just under there, and they run around the pinnacle in the kelp, so it's really a special one. Right, time to be like a seal. <laughs> In 
initially wary of a strange Northumbrian bloke floating about in their water, it's not long before the seals come out to play. Hello, matey. Hello, fella. Oh, it's a couple of them. What a privilege this is, sharing the homes of these incredible creatures and this magical underwater world. Crazy, you just swing along. Can't yeah. catch sight of them. They're broad sight. And then all of a sudden they just pop the head out of the kill. I mean, it doesn't take a clever person to work out why the seals are here. There's so much for them to eat. You know, seals feed on crustaceans, the crabs, they feed on the, the bath. It's kind of a drive through for the seals. It's a reminder that fish aren't just food for us. It's the ones we don't catch that end up in these creatures' bellies. And that's why traditional fishing methods like rod and line are so important to ensure there's enough fish for both man and beast. Some people would pay thousands of pounds and travel thousands and thousands of miles to see those sites. And Richard and Nikki have just reminded us they're on our doorstep. I'll tell you what, if you haven't been there, the west coast of Wales, get yourself here. There's one final stop I want to make before I leave Pembrokeshire. Today is National Fish and Chip Day, and I've heard that some of the finest fish and chips can be found at a rather unusual location. There he is. Lee, you're a hard man to track down. Yeah. You've pulled up outside accident and emergency. Are oh, you ill? No, no, no. We're, we're just uh, providing some fish and chips to the NHS. In a region filled with traditions, Lee Penaluna has created his own. For the past couple of years, he celebrated his favourite day by serving free portions of his famous fish and chips to the staff at his local hospital. There's something about fish and chips just takes me back to being a kid, man. Yeah. It brings back memories, doesn't it? That smell. Yeah, you go soldier. straight back, and I'm just looking at everybody's face. They're smiling. It's the greatest dish. No better romance is it. Fish and chips. Fatter fish has been married to chips for over a century and a half, and it's a match made in heaven. Everyone in the UK eats four portions each year. Everyone. Greedy blighters. But what makes Lee so special starts with a rather luxurious batter. It's a bit warm, mine, so this may pop. It's a celebration of yeah. National Fish and Chip Day. <laughs> oh, I just felt like Lewis Hamilton there. And so with the bubbles in the Prosecco and the whisking... Yeah, it makes it really, really like... Right yeah. And when the alcohol burns off, it becomes really, really crisp as well. Right. If Lee has gone to the trouble of combining my favourite drink with my favourite meal, it's only fair I sample it. I mean, I don't want to offend the lad, do I? So whose idea was the Prosecco batter? Was it yours? No, it was actually Emma's, my man, my man address. So was Emma just drinking Prosecco yeah, and just, just one drinking. day just went, do you know what? Yeah. See, things like that always fascinate me. How do yeah. you get Prosecco batter? How does a man who drives a snowplow get to work? Yeah. Things that have always puzzled me, but I want the answers too. But what keeps Lee awake at night is how to make his fish taste even better. That's why it's so good, because yeah. you're passionate about it, aren't you? Yeah. And you've been doing it a long time, and the reason why you've been doing it a long time is because you're good at what you do. Yeah, and, I, and I think a lot of people say, what's, what's my secret? And I say, the secret is my, is, is my passion, is my, is my love for fish and chips. Yeah. But does his passion pay off? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> my God. People in Northumberland, the local fish and chip shop I go to, they'll be frowning. But it's not just cod that gets the deep-fried treatment. While Scottish fryers have been known to dunk a Mars bar, 
Lee's been trying out his own variations. We experiment quite often. We do Jaffa cakes and a few other things, cream eggs. Battered cream egg and yep. battered Jaffa cake? Yeah. Is there anything you haven't battered? Does that sound right? <laughs> no, Robbo, that didn't sound right at all. Thankfully, the ever-growing crowd of NHS heroes is a welcome distraction. Why? Hey! It's the moment you've all been waiting for. I think it's a first for you lot and it's a first for me. To be kind. Right, what do you want? We got fish and we got chips. That's all we've got. Right, there's some cord. Salt and vinegar, madam. Just, uh, just salt. Just salt? No worries. <laughs> Good and chips. Good and chips. While the fish and chips are going down a storm... Lee, they're coming thick and fast. ..being back at a hospital is a trip down memory lane. My very first job was in a &E, you know? Was that? Yeah, I was in the first few series of Casualty. Oh, fair enough. I played the porter. Oh, you've done very well for yourself. 1988. I've done very well for myself. Well, I played a porter and now look where I am, selling well. fish and chips. <laughs> That's what happened to the career. <laughs> Mate, I'm sweating. It's non-stop. Man, there are hundreds of people. I'm loving this. What a great thing to do. Loving it, loving it. Feeding hungry NHS workers is the perfect end to a cracking week down here in Pembrokeshire. Right, who wants some of the best fish and chips in Wales? It's official. Where the people work their magic, honour their myths and respect the animals they share the land with. What a place this is. It really is a playground for the wildlife, the locals, and of course tourists like me. It's full of traditions. There are myths and legends in abundance. And what I love is that there are people keeping those traditions alive and creating new ones. If you've not been to West Wales, come. It's amazing. And the seafood ain't half bad either. Next time, I'm in the northeast. Prime North Sea prawn. We get what we came for. <laughs> and find beasts of the sea. There's one lean, mean, killing machine lane, yeah. huh? Robson's back, fishing coastal Britain, new next Saturday at 7.15. It's that time of year again when the big guns come out. UK's Strongest Man 2021, Monday at 7. Brand new next tonight, two cousins, one an acclaimed actor, the other the world's greatest living explorer. Sir Ranulph finds on the trip of a lifetime down the Nile. 